Um, and before we begin, I would, you could just join me in rising and honoring our nation with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. So we have, um, we have a number of VIPs in the room that we'd like to acknowledge. And if you could please stand when I call your name, there might be some new residents that don't know who you are. Um, of course, we've got Mayor Robert Moon, who's backstage. City Councilman Jeff Kors. City Councilwoman Jenny Fote. City Councilman J.R. Roberts. City Councilman Chris Mills. City Manager David Reddy. Tribal Chairman Jeff L. Gruby. Senator Jeff Stone. And representing Assembly Member Chad Mays, Vicki Starkey. The Executive Director of the Palm Springs Convention Center and Bureau of Tourism, Jamie Canfield and Riverside County Supervisor Manny Perez. I'd also like to recognize the men and women currently serving on the Palm Springs Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. If the board could please stand and be recognized. Um, and we want to express our sincere appreciation to the Palm Springs Art Museum for their generosity and support in putting on this amazing event. With special thanks to Board Chair Donna McMillan, Board President Jane Saltonstall, Executive Director Liz Armstrong, and members of the museum's board and senior staff. We'd also like to thank Jennifer Snowden for all of her hard work in assisting with this amazing event. And uh, though she didn't give me her name, I'd like to thank Nona Watson, the CEO of the Chamber, for everything she's done today. Uh, in addition, we would like to thank Abe Liao, the general manager of the Rowan Hotel, and Michael Braun, president of Grit Development. Um, they continue to work with us on the November downtown celebration, which I promise will be worth the wait. Um, if you guys could please stand so we could thank you. I'm sorry, we've got tribal members, uh, Reed Milanovic and um, Edinger as well, sorry. And um, as always, we need to take time to thank our very generous sponsors. It's through their generous support that we're able to produce the event today. Um, that include the Agua Caliente Band of Cahuilla Indians, the City of Palm Springs, <laughs> Desert Regional Medical Center, Chill Bar Palm Springs, the Desert Sun, Eisenhower Medical Center, Elevated Experience, Gregory Barton CPA, Harold Matzner, Marinov Matson, Gordon and Campbell, the list goes on, Olin Security, PS Resorts, Pacific Premier Bank, Palm Springs Art Museum, Palm Springs Exotic Car Auctions, Palm Springs Convention Center, and the Bureau of Tourism, and Rabobank. Thank you, guys. All right, and we have the mayor of Indio and the mayor of Coachella with us as well, I was just told. <laughs> College of the Desert. And now I'd like to introduce one of our sponsors for the day, uh, D.D. Wilson Barton, CEO of Barton CPA. D.D. is the forward thinker who guides the growth goals, acquisitions, employee development, and marketing at Barton CPA. And she will take the stage to introduce Mayor Robert Moon. Hi, good evening. I want to tell you that I love this event. Um, and that we only sponsor in our firm uh, things that I like going to. So um, <laughs> this worked out well. Okay, so here's the reason I like it, because this is a small business owner to small business owner tip. And that is, I come to this event and I listen to the presentation and I am always fascinated to learn about changes in our population, where our tax dollars are going, and I love hearing about economic indicators from our mayor who oftentimes looks like he belongs on a red carpet. Okay, look, I did this whole thing about his wild suit jackets, and tonight he looks like a corporate businessman, so work with me here. 
I'm the CEO of Barton CPA. We're located in the Uptown Design District. Can I get a woohoo? And we have other locations, but we, we say that Palm Springs is where our mothership is located. Um, we're always excited by what we learn here. So, in a moment, I'll introduce our hardworking and our dynamic mayor, who looks like a boring businessman tonight. Thank you, Robert. Um, but we want to make sure that you get something of business, of, of use and value to your business. So he's going to talk about statistics. Look, I haven't heard it, but I'm just winging it here. I'm pretty sure he's going to talk about statistics. And these are things you can share with your clients, include in your blogs, include in your social media, part of your marketing. You can pitch people. What a great place Palm Springs is to live and build a business. And Greg and I are parents. We also think it's a fabulous place place to raise, our, raise and educate our children. Um, you know, this has been part of our business growth strategy. Look, I want to say that we do sponsor events that we love, and, and we do the Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast, and, and we do a lot of work for Palm Springs Unified School District on the foundation board. Yeah. Um, and we know that our activism and our community involvement brings us more clients, and we're always looking forward to meeting and helping other business owners. So my husband, Greg Barton, who's there, he's supposed to be taking pictures and videos. Anyhow, he's here to, to meet you tonight, and we're always here to serve you. So speaking of service, let me just tell you um, that you're going to hear from our mayor tonight, who lives in Vista Las Palmas, in, uh, with his husband, Bob, and his shelter cat of 14 years named Simi. Uh, and I think I heard him say right before I came out that instead of doing the, the state of the city address. He's actually going to be showing us 45 minutes worth of adorable video clips of his cat. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing what I can here. He didn't wear the good jacket tonight. Um, he and his husband enjoy cooking, wine collecting, and traveled extensively. And just so you know, back there he's drinking wine now, getting ready. So, Look, he is also, let's, I, I'm sure most of us know this, but he served as an officer in the United States Navy for 22 years, retired with the rank of commander, um, was elected to be our mayor for four years uh, a couple years ago. He holds a bachelor's of science from the Naval Academy. He did graduate work at George Washington University. Okay, he's not a slacker, people. Um, he knows information and technology, was a financial analyst at the White House under the Reagan administration. He served as president of the Palm Springs Desert Roundtable and the Palm Springs Art Museum Contemporary Arts Commission. I personally have observed Mayor Moon as he stands up for what he believes is right, even if it isn't popular. Look, I appreciate that. If you didn't like what I was doing right now, I would change it so you would like me. But he's not that guy. You know, he, he lives, works, and stands up for what he believes is in the best interest of the citizens of Palm Springs. When I was the chair of the Human Rights Commission, Mayor Moon showed his heart and his passion by being deeply involved in human rights and community service. And without question, he deserves to be on the best dress list by wearing his shimmering jackets and wild prints. However, not tonight. It is my pleasure on behalf of Palm Springs and Barton CPA to dinner, introduce Mayor Moon to update us on redevelopment progress and many more new things, maybe some anecdotes about his cat. Mayor Moon. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, thank you. Is this thing on? Uh, we've been to too many chamber lunches together. She knows too much about me. So uh, uh, let me get my clicker over here. Can't do this without the clicker. I'd like to thank all of you for being here this evening for this State of the City Address. It's a little bit different, and I'll go into that a little bit later. 
later, but thank you for, for being here. And it's so heartwarming to see how all you people that are here tonight to help celebrate the wonderful, wonderful thing that's Palm Springs, the city that's like no place else. So thank you very much for being here tonight. Now, before we really get into the state of the city, there's one thing I really uh, would like to do. Okay, oh, wrong button. What? what? We do something wrong here? Wait a minute, slight technical problem. We practiced this earlier. Where's the button? Okay. Oh, sort of lost all the drama. Uh, on a very serious note, before we start our State of the City tonight, it's been almost one year since one of the uh, darkest days in the history of Palm Springs when we lost two of our wonderful police officers, uh, two, we have our two fallen heroes. And, and it was a day that I certainly will never forget. And it was amazing to watch our chief as he led the city through this. And uh, it was, it was a, an amazing moment. And it made all of us realize that all of our, our public safety officers, our fire, firefighters, our police officers, they get up every morning and they put their boots on and they go to work to protect us and to serve us. And they don't know if they'll go home that night to their families. And sometimes, like in this case, they don't. So could we just please have a short moment of silence for our two fallen heroes, Officer Gil Vega and Officer Leslie Zarebny. Thank you, and I'd like to dedicate this State of the City to them tonight. Now, the State of the City. Okay, one thing I thought, you know, I, we usually play some videos for you, and Mary Jane Ginther, you know, they, they have some great videos in the CVB, but, you know, I thought, let's do, this is going to be special. We're having this in the evening, y'all had some cocktails, and let's do something really Palm Springs, something that you haven't seen before in the state of the city. So with that, I would like to introduce a little live entertainment, because this is Palm Springs. So with that, I would like to introduce the sensational Jules. Now this could only happen to a girl like me And only happen in a town like this So let me say to each and every one of you As we blow each one of you a kiss this Palm Springs it is my kind of town Palm Springs it is my kind of people too people who smile at you and each time I roam Palm Springs it is calling home palm springs it is one town that won't let you down it's my kind of town <laughs> my kind of town palm springs And it has, come on girls, oh, and jazz and each time I leave Palm Springs, it is tuck in my sleep, Palm Springs, it is the deep green fairways, Palm Springs, it is the Palm Hope Classic. 
Grazie, grazie. Ah, oh, what a thrill this is. You know, this was where we first started. Mm -hmm. Our first debut. 13 years ago. Ah, oh, we don't were say just that. 20. Don't say that. <laughs> They call you Lady Luck. But there is room for doubt. At times, you have a very unlady You're on this date with me. The pickings have been lush. And yet, before this evening is over, you might give me the brush. You might forget your manners. You might refuse to stay. And so the best that we can do is pray. All right, girls. Who said only a man can do this, right? Nobody. Love be a lady tonight. Tell him, Wendy. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck if you've ever been a lady to begin with Luck be a lady tonight Luck let a gentleman see She'll believe of me but Just that. how nice a dame I can be We know the way you Baby, we're 
the broads that you came in with. Tell them, Kitty. Luck be a lady. Go ahead, Wendy. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady. Lady. much. Thank you, Palm Springs. We'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for being here this evening. Uh, <laughs> now, I, uh, you talk about a hard act to follow, but you know, uh, that's, I thought it was really nice to get let, get let everybody have a little bit of entertainment on this very, very special evening this evening. And so why are we here tonight? We're here for several reasons. One is to celebrate the uniqueness and the wonderfulness of this city we all share the city of Palm Springs, the city of Palm Springs, and also to talk about some of the challenges we have here in the city of Palm Springs, like every city in the state and every city in the country. And also, one reason we're here in the Palm Springs Art Museum tonight, instead of where we normally are in the convention center, was to celebrate the fact that downtown is getting finished. And, we, and the art museum... And this wonderful art museum has been hiding behind the, the Fashion Plaza Mall for all these years and then all behind all this construction for the last four or five years. And so finally, we can see it happening from Palm Canyon. You can see the Palm Springs Art Museum and you can, and you can see where the park is going to be right in front of us. So this is a celebration of the, of, the, of the Palm Springs Art Museum, the jewel of our city, becoming a part of our real living downtown. So welcome to the Palm Springs Art Museum tonight. A couple of thank yous. First, the Palm Springs Chamber of Commerce and all the sponsors. Thank you for putting this on. You know, this is a Palm, Palm Springs Chamber of Com Commerce event, and they put it on, and they do all the work. I just have to show up. And uh, thank you, to uh, thank you, uh, Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. And a very, very special thanks to the Palm Springs Art Museum. They actually allowed us to have the museum tonight with, you know, a very, very reasonable fee. And, uh, and a special thanks to a couple of people from the Art Museum. One, there's all the wonderful, all the volunteers who showed you to your seats and, and, and welcomed you to the museum. Thank you to all the volunteers. The museum couldn't function without them. And also a very special thanks to Donna McMillan, who is here this evening. Donna, thank you so much for everything you do for the, for the Palm Springs Art Museum and for the city of Palm Springs and for the entire Coachella Valley. And to Liz, Liz Armstrong, who is taking the Palm Springs Art Museum to the next level. Also, the, thank you, Liz Armstrong. And the Palm Springs Bureau of Tourism, thank you very much for all the help you gave us putting this together tonight and all the work you do. And a very special thank you to Dr. David Reddy, our city manager, and his staff who helped me put all these slides together, and my fellow council members who gave me the information to put in here, especially Jeff Kors, who helped me with a lot of the material on the budget and on the, uh, on, on the homeless uh, issues that he's been working very hard on. And also, thank you to the Sensational Jewels. Thank you very much. And, if you'd and they are going, when we finish, they will be coming out here, and they will be, one moment, please. They'll be coming out here. Let me my iPad. Okay, you'll be happy about this because I actually put a timer in front of myself. So uh, I actually put a timer down here so I won't go too long. Ugh, people normally appreciate that. <laughs> Yay! My fellow council members know about that. Okay, oops, I didn't want to mess that one up. And we'd be remiss if we did not give a special thank you to Council of Mayor Pro Tem Ginny Fote and to Council Member Chris Mills and all their years of service to the city of Palm Springs. Let's give them a, let's give them a hand. Ginny, Chris, When I started on the council almost two years ago, I knew nothing. They may argue I still don't, but uh, I, I, have, I have learned so much from them with all their many, many years of experience on the council. So thank you, Jenny and Chris. And I have a few f interesting pictures. From, I, I could put up their portraits, but nah. We had a few more pictures that I think are more fun that remind us of all the things that these council members have done over the years 
And uh, so thank you to Chris and Jenny and to their, to their spouses for all, to uh, Pam and Dawn, because believe me, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of weekends, it's a lot of time to be on the city council. Okay, to start out, public safety. And I'm bringing this up first because this, we, our council says all the time, is the most important thing we do. The safety of our residents, the safety of our visitors is number one business of the city of Palm Springs. And this became obvious just this past week on, November 9, on September 9th. You may remember when golf, we had that terrible rain and golf club drive wash washed out and Sergeant Mike Casavon, I actually happened to be on a ride along that night and I was with him in the Bearcat, and without that Bearcat, he couldn't have done this. But he actually, there was a woman whose car was stranded in that wash, and you could see the water. It was almost up to the top of her, to the doors, and he, he straddled between the Bearcat and between her car, and he pulled her two-year-old son out of the back seat who was clutching a teddy bear, and he, then he pulled the mother out, and, you, and just a few moments later, her car was washed off the bridge and went down the wash and was submerged in, 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 the, in the wash. If he had not done this, if he had not been there with his equipment, if he had not been brave enough to do this, the outcome of this could have been tragic. So, and when I said afterwards, I said, Officer, I can't believe I just watched you do this. And he said, eh, this is what we do every day. This is what we do every day. So a hand for our public safety officers. And on the council, one thing we really focused on is trying to really help. You know, our infrastructure has gotten a little old. Palm Springs has been here for a very 85, 86 years or so. We, some of our infrastructure is getting like, a little old. We celebrate mid-century architecture, but it can get old. Uh, so, you know, our fire station number four, uh, I, I actually saw it. The chief took me to go see it right after I became mayor. All the council members have seen it. It was a mess. Uh, a mess is overstating it. But this fire station number four is being totally redone. And it's getting a total gut job of the old station, adding an additional 2,600 square feet. And the original architect, Hugh Captor, who designed it in 1964, is actually on the team designing the addition. So how many cities can do that? <laughs> the planned completion time is 2019. It's costing $4 million, all of which is coming from your Measure J taxes. And and one thing I wanted to bring up here, too, is one thing a lot of people don't realize is most of the cities of the Coachella Valley and Riverside County, most of them, not all, but most of them are not lucky like we are to have their own police and fire force, which are, which, which are part of our city. They're, they're part of us. They're part of our family. Also, our city manager has a team of all the city employees who work very hard and they train a lot for crisis management. And we actually have, if, most of you haven't seen it. In fact, I hadn't seen it before I started working in City Hall. There is a crisis control center in City Hall that they have drills in all the time. If, if something happens, like the big one comes, we are prepared. And uh, just in February 2017, Dr. Reddy and the entire city staff, the police department, and the fire department spent an entire week in intensive drills covering anything and, uh, and everything that could possibly happen in a crisis and how they would respond to it. So if the worst happens, your city, your fire department, your city staff, your, fire, your police force is ready. So I think we should recognize that. And public safety, 911 dispatch. I mean, you know, Proposition 47, 57, all these things. You know, it's getting tough out there, especially for our police officers nine, and, and, and for our firefighters. And 911 call dispatch, we had our 911 calls increased 46% from 2000 to 2016. 80, 81,264 calls were handled by the Palm Springs Police Department dispatch in 2016. And by the way, that, that dispatch center is in the police department, but they handle the calls for the fire department also. And 73% of all 911 calls to the Palm Springs Fire Department required emergency medical attention. So those people are all, those men and women are on duty. Public safety, our police department, our police department is up. You may remember during the recession, we got a little down on the numbers in the police department. Palm Springs Police Department is allocated 100 sworn officer positions. We currently have 94 filled. This past year, 11 officers were hired and three retired, and we're working very hard to keep us uh, as close as we can up to the 100 allocated people. One thing that's great about having our own police force, our own, our own fire department, our neighbors know our police officers and our firemen and our, and our public safety officers know our neighbors and our neighborhoods. We now have 44 recognized neighborhoods in the city of Palm Springs, up from 41 last year. And every neighborhood has two police officers assigned to it and one sergeant and one lieutenant, 
and one lieutenant whose job is to work with that community association, get to know them, get to know what their problems are. And so if a community, any community has a problem, they know who to call. They have a person, they have their cell phone number, and this is a great thing in this neighborhood policing. Police station renovation, some more, a little more of that mid-century stuff. Uh, 1984, a little later, but it's gotten really old if you go in there. But police station renovation, it's starting very, very soon here. A complete renovation with new furniture and equipment, new restrooms and showers, new carpet and flooring, upgraded lighting, an estimated completion time of two, August 2018, again at a cost of about $4 million, coming almost entirely from Measure J funds. So... That's public safety, but you know, one reason we have to have a fairly aggressive public safety department, and a little larger than most cities who are our size, uh, is because all the special events we have here, and we're not a city of 48,000 people, we're really a city of like, with all the snowbirds and all the visitors and, and all the people that come here, we're a much bigger city than that. And special events, man, they keep growing and, and really putting Palm Springs on the map and boosting our economy. You know, I was looking for some information on this and I saw these slides and I thought, you know, this is yesterday's Palm Springs. These are the postcard Palm Springs visitors. But you know, this is not your father's Oldsmobile. This is today's Palm Springs tourist. You know, this is Splash House, and this is the White Party, and this is the Dinah, and this is all the great events that come to Palm Springs. These are the millennials, and these are the people we want to bring here because these are the people who are young and vibrant, and they come here, and they spend money, and they have a good time, and they leave, and they go tell their friends about it, and they post it on Facebook, and more people come here to Palm Springs. Last year, nearly 7 million people came to Palm Springs. Fortunately, they all, weren't all here at the same time. But uh, one, one thing that's really interesting, and I noticed that this summer in particular, is our summers are busy now. Well, there was a time when we moved here 17 years ago, you could fire a cannon down Palm Canyon in the summer and it wouldn't hit anybody, and all the restaurants were closed. Not anymore. You have to get reservations in August now. So, you know, Palm Springs has become a year-round city. And, and the publications, they, everybody writes about us. Uh, 1,100 articles published this past year, 2 billion impressions, 100,000 plus sessions to the Palm Springs, Visit Palm Springs app, which people, the millennials download to their, their phones, and 100,000 plus followers on visitor social media accounts. And... Great recognition. Lonely Planet, which we all love. Those of us who are my age can remember when we had Europe on $5 a day, and that's all gone. But Lonely Planet is now the leading book, uh, guidebook for cities throughout the world and in the United States. They named us one of the 10 best places to travel in 2017. <laughs> Expedia. Expedia, we all know. They call it, they, this year they call us one of the top 15 most exciting cities in the world, not just in the United States. Okay. This la I saved the best for last. This is my favorite. This year, Victoria's Secret named us the sexiest city in America. What can I say? I know KMIR and KESQ had a field day with that one. Uh, and, and the major events, of course, the Palm Springs International Film Festival is still the granddaddy of them all. Yay! But we have Modernism Week. We have Greater Palm Springs Pride. We have the Dinah. We have Splash House. We have the White Party. We have Tour de Palm Springs. We have Comic-Con. And look, and all those events we have, we have hundreds of them. These nine events alone bring in 483,600 visitors this past year. And, you know, what's really interesting to note here is Splash House, which started, what, three years ago, is now bringing 30,000 young people to Palm Springs. Seriously. Actually, I was very flattered they offered me free tickets this year, which I couldn't accept anyway because of, you know, ethics. But I said, there's no way I'm getting a swimming in a bathing suit and going down with that group. Uh, they are young. Uh, and Balm Springs, the, 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 the convention center, I always like to mention because it is the major economic driver of our tourism economy. And, you know, face it, Silicon Valley has information technology. Detroit has or had manufacturing. And our industry that drives our economy, that brings in tax revenue, that makes our city work is tourism. And, and, the, and the convention center is one of the key parts of that. Look at these figures right here. Last year, they had an economic impact of $69,800,000 on the city of Palm Springs and the cities around us. So, I mean, what a great, and, and, and Jamie, he's here tonight, does a great job of running that organization. 
Something I didn't mention last year, I wanted to mention this year because some big things are happening, is the Palm Springs International Airport. You know, I, if you read about Palm Springs, Inter Palm Springs International Airport, it is considered one of the top 10 friendliest airports in the United States. And those of us who travel know that not all airports are friendly. You ever been in Dallas during a thunderstorm? So, I mean, Palm Springs is great. And you get out of the airport and, and tourists, and, and we, when we're coming home, you know, you come out and you walk out of the, and you look up and you see the San Jacinto Mountains and the palm trees, and, and, and you go, wow, we're home. It's Palm Springs. That airport is amazing. They had a record 2 million passengers, over 2 million in 2017. And one thing, though, there's a responsibility of having uh, an airport. We all know, you know, that, that things happen now. And this year, the city council voted and authorized four additional full-time police officers to be on duty at the airport to make sure that our residents and our visitors are safe in our airport. So in our, in where you get your baggage and all through the airport, you are going to see these police officers keeping you safe. The reason I particularly wanted to mention this is because of the enhancement projects. That are, you're going to see them start here very soon. The airport, uh, the airport improvements are starting this year. They're improving the ticketing, baggage carousels, and the USO facility upgrades in 2017 and 18. Uh, being a retired military and seeing all those young Marines uh, young men and women from the Marine Corps from 29 Palms coming there. It's great that we're going to be making a better facility for them. The car rental facility is being upgraded with new garages, new facil facilities. Upgrades are being paid for by the federal government and dedicated airport funds. It is not coming from city general funds. Yay. <laughs> what a lot of people don't realize is we have a couple of enterprise funds that get funds from outside, and they also generate funds so they support themselves so they're not in the general fund. The water treatment plant and the airport are the two biggest ones. The other one is the golf course, but we're not going there. Uh, but <clears throat> the airport, you know, our airport is really, really busy. And look at all the airlines that are coming into our airport now. I mean, this is a major international airport. And something you may not know, uh, David said, hey, you got to tell them something new. Uh, we just found out that uh, the city has signed an agreement that the new American Airlines flights are being added in mid-December and running through the entire season, and they will be evening service seven days a week to American hubs in Dallas and Chicago. So, I mean, that doesn't just get you to Dallas and Chicago. It gets you to the world. And these flights are leaving from 11 o'clock at night till about midnight, and believe me, I'm already hearing a few calls about that one. But... Uh, <laughs> I remember going to city council meetings when the city council a few years ago would have to pay an air airline $200,000 to get them to fly into air Palm Springs. And now they're coming in here on their own because they want to be here. One thing that's great about Palm Springs, it has become a foodie capital. Uh, you know, people from Coachella uh, are coming, and, and Palm Desert and Rancho Mirage are coming to Palm Springs to eat because this is where the great restaurants are. I mean, I'm not going to name all of them. I did last year, but, you know, we've got all these great restaurants that are beautiful. they got great food. And one that's really popular, I, uh, every time I go there, it's packed with young people, old people, kids, is Blaze Pizza. I mean, the, the, one of the, the second business to open in the new downtown, and they're going gangbusters. Development. I want to show you why are you, you, you want to go you go in and you want to get your plans checked and stuff and and then go into the planning department. You know why they're so busy? That's because Palm Springs Development Project. We have 12 development projects active and in the approval process. We have 18 development projects approved that are still going in the permitting process. 18 development projects have been permitted. And we have 11 under construction and seven are in plan check. I mean, construction and development in Palm Springs is booming. So that's a really great thing to see for our economy here. But one thing I've noticed on this council is we've been very careful. We don't approve just everything. We're being very careful that not only do we have a lot, you know, the appropriate develop, but it, uh, development, but it's appropriate and it's quality. So that's one thing we want to make sure we continue to do. One thing we're very excited about, we've needed for decades since this convention center was built, is a really first-class hotel across from the convention center, and we're getting that. We recently approved the Dream Hotel with 174, 171 rooms and 34 luxury condos in that unit right across from the Palm Springs Convention Center. So that's great. <laughs> but you know, one thing Palm Springs has that other cities don't have is our small hotels and inns. And they help preserve our Palm Springs legacy and our tradition. And I want to show you a few just a few examples of that. Then North Palm Springs, 1986, the Shiloh Inn. Little dated. It is now opening in 2018 as the Tova Hotel on five acres with 124 rooms. And it's going from two stars to a four-star hotel. Another example, Serena Villas. We all have driven by this thing for years and years and years. And that way it was a mess. And that is now 
world famous as La Serena Villas with 18 room boutique hotels. And, and I went online just researching this and, and they are in, in, in uh, websites all over the world. It is a really classy property. The 1951 Holiday House, right over there uh, in downtown, it is now in 2017, the 2017 Holiday House. And here we have, this is the one, let's just all just have positive thoughts and hope this happens. Sometimes things don't happen. This one we really want to happen. Uh, the Orchard Tree in 1934 and the Community Church 1935, oy, this is a problem. And it's been a problem for a long time. I mean, we, uh, we tr uh, the last council, they, uh, Steve, I remember, tried to put uh, canvas around it, but then it became inside things going on that shouldn't go on. So they had to take It's just a bad problem. However, the council just recently approved last month the Orchard Tree Inn and Community Church will become an auberge five-star property. I had on here, but I forgot how many rooms it is, but it's going to be the same number of rooms as when it was first built as the Orchard Tree. And one thing, the developer worked with the city on this. He wanted to expand it, add some event spaces. The neighborhoods did not like it. The city council did not like it. And, and the developer worked with this, and he, and he scaled it down to where it met the, the requirements that the city put on there. This one is really, I think, is going to be really interesting. The Ballardo Hotel. Uh, anyone ever heard of the Hacienda Beach Club and Cantina? Uh, it's been in the paper a few times, but uh, that will now be, and, and here's another picture of the, what uh, the hotel is going to look like, a 66-room hotel, really, really cool place that's going to incorporate the existing Hacienda Beach Club and Cantina, which will be the restaurant, it'll be the, it'll be the event spaces, it'll be the, uh, the, the front desk, so that's a great. And the Andes Hyatt. Oops, I got the wrong slide for that one. The the uh, the Hyatt Hyatt Hotel. I, I think my council, my fellow council members will agree that we get probably more calls on this than anything and questions. The Andes Hyatt Hotel. Okay, as of yesterday, I mean, I wanted an up-to-date status for you. It's scheduled to commence pouring concrete in November, and we have that. Lawrence Rail, who is a really a quality developer, he's been around for many years. He's had some issues and some some challenges. However, uh, I've confirmed he has confirmed he is starting work in October. And uh, you know how Reagan said, trust but verify. So Marcus Fuller checked, and the contractor said they are scheduled to start pouring concrete. The contractor said, not the developer. He, the contractor is scheduled to start pouring concrete the first week in November. So we're going to see this thing moving. And if you go to Andes Hyatt website, it's on there now. They just put it on there. And you can go there and you can see all the description of what it's going to be like, 150 rooms, and it's scheduled to open early 2019. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, that's when it's scheduled. It's, 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 on, it's on the Internet. It's got to be true. So, uh, but this is going to be a really great addition to that part of downtown, certainly better than what we have, we've had down there for the last couple of years. Residential pro projects, more and more people want to move to Palm Springs to live, to work, and to play. A lot of people to retire and live here full time, a lot of people have to have second homes. So, and you know, one thing that's beautiful, if you haven't seen them, you should go see them. We're still doing luxury homes in a mid-century style. Sky development up there in, uh, in North Palm Springs is absolutely gorgeous. But we're also doing things like the old golf course, uh, which, is in, uh, which is in South Palm Springs. Which, I'm sorry, North Palm Springs, that was in South, I'm sorry. The Marilon. It was started before the recession as a golf resort, like we need another golf resort. So the, the, the people who bought it now are turning that golf course, which had been built but never, never activated, never used, is turning it into an area with, with fruit trees and palm trees and paths and bicycle paths and recreational facilities for the 1,150 homes that are going to be there. And they're going to be beautiful mid-century styled homes, and it's going to be a great addition to a part of town that really can use that. The, uh, a lot of people want the smaller condo type styles. We recently approved 64 at the Riv, the Enclave at Baristo, the Icon, which is 46 detached single family condo units on five acres, which is going to be a great addition. The Vibe, another 93 multifamily units and 72 single family homes. Okay, that brings up the next subject vacation rentals. I, I'm not going to avoid the hard stuff. Okay, vacation rental updates. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anybody. I wish Congress would work as hard as our subcommittee on vacation rentals works. I mean, they had like seven public meetings, and not all of them, not all of them were really peaceful. 
And they had 11 public, uh, seven public meetings and countless meetings with all the interested people. And they, they crafted a vacation rental ordinance which was passed by the council on April 16, 2017, which I think will become a model for not over, only for the Coachella Valley, but for other cities. And one thing that's really important is it is not etched in stone. We, uh, the subcommittee pointed out that this was a product of all the people working together. And as we learn, we can change this ordinance, we can make it better, and we probably will be making it better. But one way to make it better is the subcommittee is meeting with all the stakeholders, the, the vacation rental owners, the neighbors, the, 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 the uh, agencies that rent them. They're meeting with them every month to get input, and, and, and they will be bringing that information to the full council to make changes as needed. But you know, it's working. The new vacation rental, rental department is in place and it's operating. We have two new vacation rental compliance officers, two new accounting staff, three new code enforcement officers, and two new de dedicated compliance vehicles. And they're, they're, they're Chevy Volts, so they don't, use, like, they don't use gasoline. But you'll see these, these of uh, these vehicles driving around Palm Springs. The calls now come to Palm Springs. We respond, and this goes seven days a week. And it is, I like to, I really can say it is working. The enfor you know, when we were going through this process, a lot of people said, enforce the rules, enforce the rules, enforce the rules. So we are. We have a good ordinance. We're, we're going to make it better as time goes by, and we're enforcing that ordinance. We now have 2016 vacation rentals in Palm Springs. And that is, is a reason why we have to have rules and regulations and ordinances that keep these where it makes the neighborhoods viable, both for the vacation rental people and the people that own those vacation rentals, many of them as a second home, that they're not here all the time, and for the people who want the quiet enjoyment of their neighborhoods. This is not an easy balancing act. That's why our subcommittee works so hard on the ordinance and why we are working so hard on the enforcement. But, you know, one thing you have to can't, can't lose sight of, in 2016-17, vacation rental TOT was $7.58 million. <laughs> so I think that just makes it clear why we have to, why we really need to make this vacation rental ordinance work. And, and results of stepped-up enforcement rules, which have been going from January to August, which Dr. Reddy put that team together really fast for the vacation rental department. The total citations issued in that time period was over 329. Unregistered vacation rental citations issued were 100 plus, and we had nine suspensions and two revocations. So we are enforcing the rules, and we're working very hard to make this work. So thank you to uh, <laughs> Councilmember Kors and Councilmember Rogers for all the hard work. Oh, I skipped over that. And anything anybody ever wanted to know about vacation rentals is on the website at this page. Downtown Palm Springs, okay, yay. How long have we been hearing about that? Uh, I remember four years ago when, when, when Mayor Pugnier led everybody from the Hilton, I was there and we went downtown and they banged on the side of the old Bank of America building, remember that? It's been a long time since then. But it's coming along. You know, Palm Springs is a city, it's been a bold city and a creative history for over 100 years. In 1909, Nellie Kaufman opened the, 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 uh, the inn downtown which the Desert Inn, which was the first of its kind in Palm Springs and in the entire area. And that put Palm Springs on the map. People started coming here for their health and because of the beautiful area that we live here. That was a brave thing to do. She ran that from 1909 till her death in 1950. 1967, it was raised. You know, that spirit has continued. After, Palm Springs sort of got, uh, during the war, during World War II, things slowed down quite a bit. But after the war, Palm Springs really started booming again. It was a city with a bold and creative history. In the mid-century, the Alexanders and the Alexander Homes, and it put Palm Springs on the map once more. Now, in 2017, we are a bold and creative city, and we're welcoming a new century. So this is the new downtown, and this is opening this fall. And it's going to have 153 hotel rooms, eight restaurants, 80,000 square feet of retail, 30,000 square feet of office space, and 1,200 1, underground parking places. And opening in the fall of 2017, I mean, these are the logos of some of the stores that have contracted, and we, are, we can now announce, Michael Braun has announced, are coming in. So, so look at some of these names, H&M, Tony Bahamas, uh, the Row in Palm Springs, uh, Juniper, and Starbucks Reserves. That's where you can go to Starbucks in the morning and get some coffee and go in the afternoon and get a glass of wine. So it's going to be great for Palm Springs. And the, the Rowan is looking great. I don't know how many of you have had a chance to visit it. 
actually, we were all going to go there after this tonight, but uh, things happen. And I must say, it was not Michael Braun's fault, grit, fault uh, Grit's fault. There was a little bit of an issue with the, with Riverside County, you know, but uh, we won't go there. Uh, but, a little, but, uh, but things happen. So we are going to make sure everybody who bought a VIP ticket for tonight and paid the extra money, you are getting a coin. I've got a one in my pocket, I think. We, and when we oh, when we have a celebration of the downtown in November, you will be invited to a special party just for you and the roof of the Kempton. And this, you can see what the roof of the Kempton is going to look at. Right now, thanks to Riverside County, a whole bunch of it's had to be t torn up again. That's why we can't go up there. But it's, I've been through it. It's absolutely a stunning hotel. And what I was talking about is in November, we're going to have a grand opening. We're already working with the chamber and the city and we're going to have a grand opening. Harold Matzner has offered to fund a spectacular fireworks exhibit. We're going to have a taste of the city. Hey, Harold, thank you. He's always there when we need him. We're going to have a taste of the city. We're going to have a ribbon cutting, and we're going to bury a time capsule, and we're going to have bands and music, and we're going to celebrate this November the actual opening, a formal opening of our new downtown that has been so long in coming and so needed in the city. And the next phase of downtown will be starting soon, and that also will most likely include, or is planned to include, the Virgin Hotel, which will be another great addition to our downtown. And I, I would be remiss talking about our downtown and not talk about our partners, many of them are, who are here tonight, from the Agua Caliente Tribe of Cahuilla Indians, who uh, were here a long time before we were, and are really our partners here in Palm Springs. I was really honored the other day to be invited to go, and every, I mean, they had a lot of people. There was a great event. When they, 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 uh, they unveiled their 800 new covered parking spaces in downtown Palm Springs. If you do the math, their 800 and our 1,200 adds up to 2,000 parking places, which we didn't have, you know, before. So that's gonna, really going to help tremendously. And the new entrance to the casino, if you haven't been there, go park in the garage and go through that entrance. This is a picture from the ribbon cutting of that casino, uh, the entrance, and his spectacular brand new cir circular bar in the center of the uh, of the of the uh, of the uh, casino, which is beautiful. And I'm I I, I understand it soon. Vice Chairman Olinger said at this day, at this event, that very soon, probably in October, November, they will be announcing more of their vision, uh, uh, vision Agua Caliente, and we'll be learning about what they're doing, including like what they're going to be doing with their cultural museum, which is going to be in a tremendous addition to our city, the spa, the hotel. So we're anxiously waiting to, to hear what our partners in Palm Springs will be doing downtown. The new downtown park, this is really exciting. Uh, Councilmember Mills and Councilmember Roberts have been the subcommittee working very hard on this. And when it first started getting mentioned, people talked about, oh, having fences and having big events and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and people and the new council particularly went, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, we really don't want to do that. And uh, so these are the words of Nellie Kaufman. And, you know, the space, stillness, solitude, and simplicity, we want that in downtown Palm Springs. And this is sort of a conceptual drawing of what the current plan is. And one thing that the city did is, is the architects uh, Rios, who has worked with the museum and with the city of Palm Springs and with our subcommittee, they went out and asked the residents online, what do you want this park to look like? What do you want this park to feel like? And what should the park experience be like? 1,370 residents responded. And this is the concept that they came up with. And this is really exciting, people. This is going to be this is going to be a wonderful addition to downtown. One great thing is here's the Palm Springs Art Museum, and this is like a front lawn to the Art Museum. Over here we have the Frey House, which is the Illuminaire House, which is sitting in a truck waiting to be put up. Uh, an outdoor sculpture garden here, a, a, an event space here, a lawn, a small stage here. Over, up here we have this is it's hard to tell from this drawing, but this is designed as a amphitheater. It actually goes up in height. It scales up like a, like a theater because the, the parking structure is there, and this hides a, much, a big portion of that open portion of the uh, parking structure. A really nice water feature here, and over, uh, we have a grassy concept area here with shade, which people can sit and enjoy. And what's really going to be great is, is the trees and places where people can sit and have lunch where the, they just bought at one of the new restaurants and stores downtown. And they can sit and read a book, and they just enjoy being with their friends. And over here... Forever Maryland Park. <laughs> now, not to put off top dot on the spot, but uh, Palm Springs Resorts is still working very, very, very hard to make it happen. It ain't, it ain't, you know, it's not totally completed yet, but I think uh, if anybody can work this out, off top dot on can, and he's working very hard on getting this. So, so uh, friends, 
in Palm Springs, this is going to be amazing. And the final concept review will be at City Council on October 18th. So if you're interested in this, please come. But this is going to be the, the, a, a, an incredible addition to our downtown. A lot of people, you know, some people are concerned about what we're doing downtown. Things were too high, too modern, too new, etc. Of course, I sometimes think what would have happened in 19... 48, 49, 50 of people have said that. But, you know, one thing that's very important to Palm Springs and to most of us who live in Palm Springs is to preserve the architectural legacy of our city. We have priceless legacy here in architecture. The Town and Country Center. This council, I'm very proud of the fact that this council voted. This was originally going to be torn down. A street built through it and it was going to have high rises on it. We turned that around. We declared it at historic. So it will be preserved and it will become part of downtown again. And what's really great is it's between what the tribe is doing on Section 14 and what's being done downtown on the new downtown. So it's going to be a great oasis between those two modern developments, a place where people can go and hopefully sit and have coffee and enjoy the beautiful uh, gardens that are in the center there. And we were very delighted to recently to see uh, Michael Braun show up at the town in, in the Desert Sun. If it was in the Desert Sun, it must be true. Uh, that he is committed to doing this. And Michael, not to put you on the spot, but I wanted to quote him for what he said. And we were very excited that he said this. Michael, you said this. And we're, hold, we're gonna hold you to this. We want to see this happen. The city wants to see this happen. We want this done. So we're gonna work with you. We're gonna do what we need to do to work with you to get this done, to make the downtown, uh, the town and country center be what it once was. And this will work. It will work. You know, the first night our new council was seated, we voted unanimously, unanimously, which doesn't happen a lot, uh, to declare the Talkwas Plaza historic. It was going to be torn down and a hundred or so condos were going to be built. We stopped it. We declared it historic, although it was 1974, so it was a little iffy on that, but we did it. And adaptive reuse of historic buildings can be done, and this is proving it. Because you, if you drive by now there, you can see Coffee has already said they're moving in there. Palm Springs Escrow is moving in there. And several others are on negotiation, which, I can't, which we can't say yet. In fact, I don't even know who it is. But we do have a lot of people looking to move in there. And also, for, for the Chamber of Commerce, we've had 66 new businesses have grand openings this year alone by the Chamber of Commerce. So thank you, Chamber of Commerce. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta go fast because we're getting into some of the stuff that's really interesting. Uh, the Measure J update. Okay, Measure J. You know, it's working. The city. You can see the revenue that's coming in from this, and it's working. I wanted to show you in a very simple graph here where the money is going for. When, when we say the downtown project, uh, the downtown project is actually. Oops, darn it! I hate it when it, I hate it when that happens. I lost it. Eh, gave gave away what's coming. Uh, the downtown project is. Uh, we talked about that, you know, as, you, as you probably all know, uh, when, when Measure J was done, there was a $25 million bond the city took out to pay for buying the land, buying the infrastructure, the garage, putting in the infrastructure, the streets, the paving, the underground utilities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we put 25, we invested $25 million into that. Actually, $3.4 million a year comes off of Measure J at the top every year to pay for that. So every year since Measure J has been in place, that money has been coming off of the downtown project. Streets and sidewalks. A uh, big part of this is streets, but also we're doing a lot of sidewalk repair and new sidewalks and also handicapped access on our sidewalks that didn't have them. Also, police and fire facilities, we do not use, the city has not used Measure J to pay for fire and police. However, we, the buildings you saw that we're building, the new police station, new fire station, is coming out of Measure J. Parks and recreation, a lot of money have, has gone into that area and community projects. So Measure J is doing what we said it would do, and it's adding a lot to our city of Palm Springs. Street paving projects. I asked David yesterday, I said, David, want to show these figures. Uh, that, we've, that we're doing on street paving. I mean, look at these numbers. And five-year total is $27,600 we've done in five years on street paving. I said, have you done that much in the last 20 years? And he, he said he didn't think so. But uh, this is more street paving that's been done in a very long time. And trust me, you all know we needed it. So thanks to Measure J, we're getting that. Because so far, $15 million of that has come from Measure J. $27 million meant 75 miles of streets were repaired, or 16 million square feet. Nearly a third of all of our city streets have already been repaired. And of that, Measure J has been almost $15 million of it. So your Measure J dollars have been in work, at work. The challenge of homelessness. I just came back from four days, three days in Sacramento at a League of California Cities meeting where mayors and council members and city attorneys and city managers 
from all over the state were there, 1,800 of us, and we had lots of, lots of meetings and conferences and lectures, et cetera. Two, there were two big challenges that all the cities are facing. One of them is homelessness. Every city is facing this. But Palm Springs, I think, is doing a good job with this. Uh, one, one thing we did, the, this council did that's a little bit unique. You know, Roy's was a good idea, and it just was it didn't, it didn't execute the way it should have. And one, one problem with Roy's, there was never enough funding to keep it open 24 hours a day. So the, the clients who came there in the evening had to leave in the morning, which made it really tough because they really couldn't get the services they need. The city of Palm Springs funded a program. It didn't last very long because Roy's closed. But I wanted you to see the figures up here. By key, we, we funded, the city of Palm Springs funded keeping staff and keeping this Roy's open during the day to help these people who needed help, and these are the results that we got in just that short time from September to January. So great work there. And the houses cri housing crisis response team, we have six people who work on this team. We have two who are uh, sworn police officers, two who are non-sworn police officers, we call them community officers, and two people who are mental health experts who actually work for the city of Riverside, but we pay Riverside to have them in our city full time because otherwise Riverside wouldn't put them here. So these six people work full time to interface with our homeless people, and these are some of the statistics of the people they have, held, they have helped in the past year. And funding homeless services is not inexpensive, and we do, we've do. we been doing the best we can, but you'll see we spent $1.3 million last year, and we are again this year on helping the homeless. And what we've been doing so far, I think, is a model for success. These outcomes have made Palm Springs a model, and you can see the other things we're doing up here, and it encourages other people to also uh, work on this, such as Desert Healthcare District's $2 million contribution towards the West Valley homeless efforts. And uh, we're really grateful to Desert Healthcare District and to Jeff Kors, who worked very hard with Herb Schultz, who's the CEO, to get some additional funding to help our find home, uh, housing for our homeless people. Finance! This is always the fun part. I'll go through this real fast. Uh, our, our latest budget, this is where we are. Our budget, our revenues are 110.6 million. Our expenditures are 110, which gave us a surplus of a half a million dollars, roughly. Estimated cash reserves of $17 million. And I'll explain that a little bit. Our general fund reserves, you can see here, have been coming up since uh, during the recession. They took a hit. They went really down far to 9%. We've been working very hard to build them back over the next couple of years. Recently, the city council, because we're being faced with increased pension costs, which I'll address in a minute, decided we need to start putting money away in a special fund to help pay for these increased pension costs. And so we're putting away $6.5 million a year starting this year in a special fund, which is a reserve fund, but it's not general reserves. It's in a reserve fund for pensions. This, this gets, gets complicated, but if you had that $3.25 million we took out and put in that special reserve, we still have over $20 million in reserves. The CalPERS payment history. Remember I told you the other cities said there's two issues that are really hurting them and draining their coffers? Uh, one of them is homelessness, and the other one is this, the CalPERS payment history and projections for the next five years. You can see in 1617, the city of Palm Springs was paying $13.2 million a year, and it's projected to go to $26 million a year by 2022 if CalPERS makes 7% on their investments, which they haven't been doing so great on that lately. So we'll see what happens. But uh, one thing I wanted to mention, where are the additional funds going? Okay, one thing I like, the way I like to use an analogy on this is a lot of people are saying, oh, all the, our city employees are getting more and more and more pensions. They are not. Not one employee is getting more pension because of this program. They are not. What this is like is because, say you went to the bank, you got a variable rate mortgage, and the bank gave you 3% interest. And you were, you had, your mortgage was based on that. Well, the bank then goes out and loses 40% of its investments. And they're going, oh, man, we have to make that money up. So how are we going to make it up? We're going to take it from our, our uh, mortgage holders. So that you have a variable rate mortgage. They change your mortgage to 6%. They virtually double your mortgage payment. Are you getting anything else? No, but you're paying twice as much. That is exactly what is happening because CalPERS did not invest well during the, the downturn, and they lost 40% of their investments. So they are making it up on the cities. We are at the bottom of the food chain. And it goes the federal government, the city, go the state government, the county government, and then cities. And that's why these costs are going up. But one thing the city has been doing for a few years to try, because we've seen this problem coming, the city's seen this coming, and uh, the city has been negotiating when they negotiate the, uh, with the unions to change the number of empl the, the uh, employees, their, their pension plans, and, make and have it where the employees work longer and the pension program is 
less money that they get when they retire. As a result of that, you can see here that in 2017, 35% of our employees are now on the new pension program, and in 2017 alone, this saved us a million dollars. So as uh, more employees move on to this new program, we'll save more and more money. Okay, let's talk a little about, I was talking about the CalPERS, let's talk about state takeaways. The state of California, we had this great thing called RDA. RDA paid for the convention center. It paid for affordable housing. It paid for so many things. And one, one day, about three years ago, the city went, oops, we're taking away the $30 million that Palm Springs has in their account for RDA. It just went. They took it. And then we also used to get, up until three years ago, the city of Palm Springs would get $5 million a year in new RDA funds for new projects like the convention center and affordable housing. They took that away. They gave us something. They gave us an additional $40 million in tax in bills for CalPERS every year to make up for pension fund contributions. So uh, this is one of the reasons we're having a little bit of problem here, or a challenge, let's say. So what are we doing about it? We're setting aside $6.5 million a year for the next six years as a special reserve for our pensions fund. In the current year, we have taken $3.25 million out, as I mentioned, and we're having to also look for $3.25 million in cuts from the currently approved budget to make that bogey of $6.5 million this year. Starting next fiscal year, we're going to have to identify an additional $6.5 million every year to go into that fund to help us pay the, the, the amount we have to pay every year, which is increasing. And we're working hard to grow our local economy. Like I said, tourism is our, is our industry. And that's how we make money for our tax revenues. So we're working hard to grow the local economy. And the city council is placing before the voters the opportunity to approve Measure D and Measure E to increase local tax revenues. I want to cover this very briefly because I think you've read a lot about it. Measure D would authorize a one-half cent increase in sales tax for essential city services. I'm going to get a little geeky here, but bear with me. It will raise an estimated $67 million a year, replace a recently expired county sales tax of a quarter percent with a local sales tax to Palm Springs of a half a percent. But 100% of that one-half cent sales tax would stay in Palm Springs. The, core, the previous quarter cent did not stay in Palm Springs. It went to the county. And up to two-thirds would come from tourists, and, and, uh, and the finance department figures that approximately the average resident in Palm Springs would pay $5 a month or so in additional sales tax, or maybe $60 a year, of course, based, based on the individual. And it would help replace that $30 million I just talked about in lost RDA and approximately $40 million in pension rate increases required by CalPERS, therefore, therefore avoiding some really painful cuts in city services and programs. The local sales tax facts, the sales tax in Palm Springs is currently 8.7. This is, this is something people don't know. The sales tax is 8.75%. On $1 of sales tax in Palm Springs, the state collects 8.75 cents. Of that, Palm Springs keeps one cent from Measure J, and we get one cent for the general fund. That's two cents. And the state and the county receives 6.75 cents. So when people say, oh, Palm Springs has 8.75% sales tax, yeah, but that doesn't go to us. That goes to other people. And by the way, a lot of people don't realize this also, but on the property taxes we all pay on our homes and businesses, we, the city of Palm Springs, keeps 22.7%, and the county and other agencies keep over 77% of all the property taxes paid in the city of Palm Springs. So the local sales tax facts, the bottom line here, there is a one-half cent of additional local sales tax, which can be levied under state law. State law controls how much this can be. And whoever passes a local measure first, the county or the city, will get that revenue. And I know our county supervisor is here today, so I'm a little worried about saying this. But the county of Riverside could put it on the ballot as a countywide tax, which would go to the county gen general fund or... The residents of Palm Springs could get there first and approve the additional half cent for use only in the city of Palm Springs. So, I worked really hard to get that down from being really complicated to being so simple. I, I figured if I could understand it, maybe, oh, I, you know, I could explain it, maybe it would be. A, and what's a few examples of what that half a cent sales tax is going to go to? It's going to go to fire and police, including equipment like our SWAT vehicle, which saved those two lives just last week. Without that SWAT vehicle, God knows what would have happened because it could not have been done with a police car. Parks and recreation and public services. You see, there's the, there's the cat. I had to have a pussy cat in here. The swim center, et cetera. So I measure E, the Palm Springs Cannabis Business Tax. Hey, this is a no-brainer. 
you know, measure uh, the, the cannabis business tax. Currently, the city receives 10% tax from medical cannabis operators on gross receipts, and Measure E would ensure the same tax can be equally applied to any new commercial, medical, and adult use operations. And it would ensure that Palm Springs has the revenue to actually enforce and run this and bring a few extra dollars into the coffers. So these are very complex and very important tax uh, initiatives, and our subcommittee on this, Councilmember Kors and Mayor Pro Tem, folk worked very hard to craft these with our city attorney and our city manager and get them on the ballot. So thanks, guys, for your work on that. Our residents make our city like no place else. You know, it's, we're really unique, and we have 44 organized neighborhoods, which I mentioned earlier. 44. No other city in the valley has this, and very few uh, cities in the state. And this has been recognized at a national level. Uh, people from our neighborhood association have been going to conventions and speaking. And we're very proud to announce that the national organization, that the, we are going to be the host city for Neighborhoods USA in 2019 for their national convention so they can come here and see how it's done. So thank you to all of our neighborhood leaders and our 1PS people. And with that... I want to say thank you, Palm Springs, and we're going to have a little closing thing with our fab sensational Jules. So you're welcome to listen to the, the fabulous Jules close our program, and then we will see you next year. Thank you very much for coming. Where do you think you're going? Oh, you don't want to miss this. We want to dedicate this song that Kitty actually had arranged for us many, many years ago. And we want to dedicate this song to our military all over our country for protecting and keeping us safe. And we'd also like to recognize all of our local heroes, our policemen, our firemen, and all the rest of you that keep our community safe. We, lo we love you, we thank you, and we honor you. And also the first responders all over our nation, thank you for your service. For spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountains, majesty above.
dedication. We sure do. And we hope you enjoy this one. Any minute now. <laughs> Better not snooze. We're back in the news. No other playground like it. Hooray, Paul Springs. For those in the know, it's the place to go. I'll seize the day, get carried away, life's not a dress rehearsal, hooray for spring, so come on out and play, and do it right away, give him hooray to you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. See you next year. This is going to be a tough. This is going to be a hard one to top. Ugh.